Hello, everyone. Republic Act 10121, or the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management System, states in its declaration of policy, it shall be the policy of the state to uphold the people's constitutional rights to life and property by addressing the root causes of vulnerabilities to disasters. Adhere to and adopt the universal norms, principles, and standards of humanitarian assistance and the global effort on risk reduction. Incorporate internationally accepted principles of disaster risk management. Adopt a disaster risk reduction and management approach that is holistic, comprehensive, integrated, and proactive in lessening the socioeconomic and environmental impacts of disasters, including climate change, and promote the involvement and participation of all sectors and all stakeholders concerned at all levels. Develop, promote, and implement a comprehensive national disaster risk reduction and management plan. Adopt and implement a coherent, comprehensive, integrated, efficient, and responsive disaster risk reduction program. Mainstream disaster risk reduction and climate change in development processes such as policy formulation, socioeconomic development planning, budgeting, and governance. Provide maximum care assistance and services to individuals and families affected by disaster. Implement emergency rehabilitation projects to lessen the impact of disaster and facilitate the resumption of normal social and economic activities. This is Dr. Teddy Herbosa, your host for Health Issues. In this episode, we tackle disaster risk reductions in health. We have as our guest, Dr. Ronald Law, Chief of the Preparedness Division of the Health Emergency Management Bureau, the Department of Health. He is responsible for policies, plans, and programs on health and disaster resilience. He is also a faculty in the UP College of Public Health and is also a Fulbright Scholar on health security and an author of several articles on health emergencies and disaster management. Ron, welcome to Health Issues. Thanks for having me here, Dr. Ted. So what was this uh, Fulbright scholarship that you went to? Which part of the U.S. did you visit? Uh, I've been hosted by the University of Washington based in Seattle, Washington. I was there for four months to investigate the topic of health security. So I was there to look into the U.S. best practices in terms of the health aspect of uh, disaster risk management. Any, any new things that you can share with our uh, viewers on health security and disasters? Not really so much. Uh, however, uh, in terms of my experience there, uh, I saw how, uh, in particular, the state of California was uh, addressing the health concerns of the wildfire, which uh, yes. was ravaging uh, some parts of California. So their uh, disaster hazards are different from ours. Cause, yeah. uh, we, we address uh, volcanic eruptions mm -hmm. and uh, typhoons, and mm -hmm. they do not have. Let's get down to it. Uh, my first question is, you belong to the Health Emergency Management Bureau of the Department of Health. What, it's called HEMB for mm -hmm. short. What does the HEMB do and what is its mandate and how does it help the Filipino people? Okay. Health Emergency Management Bureau, or short for HEMB, is, uh, is an office in the Department of Health. Its primary mandate is to manage the health consequences of disasters through a comprehensive and systematic approach that we call disaster risk reduction and management. In health, So it entails a lot of programs so that uh, during disasters, we are able to manage or reduce uh, mortality and morbidity that are preventable. And uh, this is very important to look into. And during actual disasters, we act as the actual, we act as, we act as the coordinating office. Correct. So we represent the DOH to the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council, which is uh, provided for in the Republic Act 10121. Yes, so you have a seat. You, have, you, you sit on the health seat of the National Disaster Risk Reduction yeah. and Management Council. So anything related to health, it is the HEMB that will address it, correct? Yes. Uh, what are the basic and common public health issues that we handle in every disaster? Are there principles that we follow, that HEMB follows, so that... Uh, there will be a standard approach to the people affected by disasters. Okay. First, in terms of issues, the usual health issues uh, will, will, will always arise. So some have to do with uh, public health medical aspects, so the usual communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, this may uh, surface. Along with that, of course, non-communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, trauma, traumas, trauma is important. It depends on the kind of hazard when you put displaced people in the evacuation centers, these usual health problems might 
may come about. Other than that, sometimes there are impacts on the mental health aspect of people. We also have to look into the nutritional aspect and very importantly, water sanitation and hygiene because this is important in order to prevent outbreaks of diseases which are, which are common. So let me repeat that. The first one was public health concerns, uh, spread yeah. of communicable diseases in evacuation centers. The second is uh, essential and emergency care, yeah. trauma cases, yeah. the needing care yeah. that you need to address. The third you said was uh, communicable, ah, uh, the third you said was uh, psychosocial. Yes mental That's and right. psychosocial illnesses. The fourth you said is uh, wash, water, sanitation, and hygiene. Yeah. We're still missing one more. Nutrition. Correct, very good. So we're missing the nutrition. So let's start with wash, because I know for a fact that in disasters, for the first 24 hours, if you don't have water, yeah. you will have problems. So what does wash, wash is the short for? It stands for water, sanitation, and hygiene. Okay. So basically, uh, those are important components that we are looking into. First, during uh, disasters, we must ensure access to safe uh, water that people can, can drink. Correct. So potable, water, potable, water, potable water. Because uh, most of the time, uh, diarrhea may, may happen and it arises because of so many things. But uh, having uh, safe water to drink is an important component of of the response and we need to make sure this is uh, made made available especially to those that who are uh, you know vulnerable correct water is life right yes essential. and if you don't drink for 24 hours you start to thirst you start to have problems if you have a small child mm -hmm. or you have an elderly and they have no water for yeah. 24 48 hours you're going to have medical problems yeah. of dehydration that's right. Correct? that's right so it's very important to be able to provide safe when you say mm -hmm. safe not infective, yeah. potable, yeah. people can drink it. Yeah. So how do you do this? How, how okay. do you so, provide uh, safe, potable drinking okay. water? So first, we, we must ensure that the standards are being followed. Uh, we do uh, regular water testing to make sure these are things. Of course, we have to mobilize. You bring test kits, right? Test to the kits. disaster site. You bring test kits, and if the water being given mm -hmm. is coming from a source, you test for yeah. microbiology. Yeah, that's so right. There is bacteria yeah. that can infect yeah. uh, people. What else? So we must ensure I see this plastic uh, blue cans oh. that you give away. Yeah. So what is this? They're called jerry cans. Okay, jerry is spelled like jerry. Yeah. Tom and jerry. Jerry yeah, yeah, cans, yeah. 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 That's right. So it's a uh, storage. So we, we, we provide that so that people store it uh, properly. But and that's first, drinking water, right? Yeah. But if the source isn't safe, what do you provide? Uh, you provide something there. Yeah, yeah. Tablet, some disinfectants. Disinfectant, uh, yeah. a chlorine tablet, right? Yeah, so yeah. you have the jerry can. What's the size of that? How many water liters of water does a jerry can have? It's supposedly uh, for, 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 for family. We do the necessary so, so a jerry can will yeah. be good for a day for a family yeah, of yeah. how many? At least four. At four, least four at or least four. five people, yeah, right? Yeah. So they will have portable drinking. So the, the Department of Health distributes this during... Uh, uh, disaster to the homeless, right? They are given yeah. a jerry can yeah. and some other water source is given mm -hmm. and then you give the chlorine tablets. Yeah. You put it in the jerry can mm -hmm. and then it has like a faucet yeah. so that the people can drink yeah. safe water That's right. immediately. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. What else? The other part of WASH is uh, you send out uh, filtration systems. Uh -huh. The DOH has machines yeah. that uh, can convert flood water to drinking water. Oh, uh, sometimes uh, it remains to be a, a good option, but uh, yeah, but the basic uh, a domestic uh, of, of water is still, in. but sometimes that is an option, but we don't usually uh, uh, recommend doing that, you okay. know, converting, yeah. And so, so that's one. And what is the sanitation and hygiene? Maybe I'll start with the hygiene. You also give away uh, a pail with the, mm -hmm. for taking a bath, Inside there is a mm -hmm. sanitary napkin. So, oh. <laughs> what do you call that? Hygiene That's kit. That's the hygiene kit. Yeah. So why why are you giving away water, jerry cans, hygiene kits? Mm -hmm. Can you explain what are what is the public health consequence of a hygiene kit? Okay. So sometimes a hygiene can be compromised during emergencies and disaster. So we have to make sure people have the means. Of course, uh, water is also essential in taking care of hygiene, like uh, the daily uh, use of water for for bathing. So right. we have to make sure people uh, take a bath and then, uh, let's say, our reproduct uh, reproductive age group women would have 
to have access to sanitary napkins. Yeah, for their monthly menstrual cycles, right? Yeah. So which are very important. And we also, also know that in, in public health, the most common cause of diarrheal gastrointestinal disease is uh, hand-to-mouth or fecal-oral root, we call it. That's right. So it's very important to have so, hand washing. Yes, yes. So we provide soap, yeah. we provide uh, clean water yeah. so that people can wash their hands yes. often. Mm -hmm. And today, even res respiratory illnesses can be spread by yes. unclean yes. hands. That's so true. you give the hygiene part. How about the sanitation part? Sanitation is about toilets, the right? The toilets, oh. yeah. Can you explain what the department So toilets does? are important. They, made to be, they have to be made sanitary, of course, again, to prevent uh, uh, transmissible diseases that can be transmitted through the fecal oral. So uh, we need to make sure toilets are also sanitary and people don't just uh, uh, defecate anywhere and we Correct. have to make yes. sure waste management is uh, being, being followed. In fact, I see this in uh, all the different evacuation centers. There are so many people using one toilet and if you go to the toilet, you're the first one to run away <laughs> because it's so unsanitary. Yes, yes. So you provide, I've seen the Department of Health provide uh, uh, portable, the, the portalets, portable yeah. portalets or sometimes they are able to dig Yes, and uh, do latrines. Latrines, yeah, latrines. latrines. Yeah. So the latrines are noticed are has to be designated away from water sources. Yes, from the pump. it has to be. Yes. Why? Why does it have to be away? So of course that is there's a possible risk of uh, contaminating uh, water that people use for drinking. So Especially the the yes, pozo, yes. the groundwater. If you just defecate and urinate anywhere. The groundwater that yes. is sipped underwater yes. and it will contaminate with the groundwater. Exactly. And then you, you promote illness. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. Portable water, hygiene kits for taking a bath, washing your hands, and then also your uh, sanitary latrines mm -hmm. and your toilets. Yeah. Let's go to nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have to provide uh, nutrition to the evacuees. After 24 hours, they'll all be hungry. Yes. So, what is the role of the Department of Health? in terms of nutrition, and what is the role of DSWD in terms of nutrition? Okay, so uh, as you know, nutrition is an important aspect to look into. So there are areas that are affected by disasters. Sometimes malnutrition is a concern. Correct. So, and on top of that, sometimes agriculture is affected. So no food, it yeah. leads to problems in terms of food availability, uh, quality and quantity. And of course, uh, DSWD takes care of the food. But ensuring the nutritive value that people have access to nutrients that they need so they are able to prevent the occurrence of diseases is important. So we have to make sure uh, people, especially in belonging to the vulnerable groups, in specific terms, for example, uh, pregnant and lactating women, they need to continue uh, having the, the type of nutrition that they need. Correct. In so terms that, uh, of breastfeeding. They can produce uh, yeah. breast milk yeah. because we all know that uh, the breast code of the Philippines doesn't allow distribution of milk formula yes. during disasters. Yes. In fact, in the recent Taal volcano, we saw many preg lactating mothers donate their frozen breast milk yeah. to, the, to the children because I think the mothers are unable to, to produce, produce milk, milk because yeah. of the stress. Yes. So very important to provide nutrition, lactation for the, for the babies and uh, nutritious food, right? Yeah, yeah. Very important to have nutritious food, especially targeting those that are predisposed to severe malnutrition. Yes, that's so correct. you identify children who are in a uh, moderate or severe malnutrition Sick, yeah. and make sure they are fed yes. with high protein, high calories yes. for food. What the DOH doesn't really feed, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually the... The yes, DSWD, DSWD, the Department of right. Social Welfare yeah. and Development, yeah. provides the food. So yeah. if you want to donate food, you give it to... Yeah. What, you, what does the DOH do? DOH does the micronutrient supplementation, which is part and parcel of our nutrition programs. And assessment of the children's yes. uh, nutritional status. Yes, exactly. So you, you seek out in the evacuation centers mm -hmm. who are the kids that are moderately malnourished or mm -hmm. severely. If they're severely you hospitalize yeah, them, right? Yeah. If they're moderate, you make sure they are given priority yes. in terms of the food. Yes. So they were very interesting. Uh, in the recent uh, Taal volcano eruption, I even saw LGUs provide food through uh, catering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you advise this catered food with, uh, with all the evacuees in an evacuation center? It's an interesting approach. Because right? the first time I've seen <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. 
definitely it's interesting, but we have to look into the, uh, the practices. Yeah, the I nutrition. Mean, because the food itself, we prefer ready to eat. Yeah. Because sometimes in the area, there is no cooking facility. Yeah. So if there's no cooking facility, the handling of the food can yeah. be the source of yeah. a gastrointestinal Correct. epidemic Correct. or outbreak. So it's very important that we, the food is also safe, just yeah, like the yeah. water. They must not be contaminated. If they've been prepared elsewhere and brought there, they could mm -hmm. have been messed up somewhere yes, during yes. the... So it's very important to have this. So nutrition is a big aspect. And then we go to public health, mm -hmm. right? So the, the vulnerable groups are the women, of course, mm -hmm. the women and the children. Mm -hmm. So when you put all these people in evacuation centers, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that spreads is someone has a cough and the next family has a child and they have a mm -hmm. cough. And what are the programs of the Department of Health to, to prevent the spread of illnesses? So wash and food, clean food, will mm -hmm. prevent gastrointestinal mm -hmm. illness or diarrhea. But how about the respiratory infections? Okay, so respiratory infections are, are very common. Uh, acute respiratory infections are usually the top cause of uh, morbidity. So the, the common way of preventing it is being done. And on top of that, we, we need to do very good surveillance. So an evacuation center is usually congested, cramped, and sometimes uh, it can have issues in terms of having you know, the basic amenities. So uh, we need to look into uh, surveillance. So uh, hygiene, hygiene promotion is equally important, and we need to go back to the, you know, the prevention and control, control measures. measures. Like uh, if people are, for example, wearing masks or wearing mask. isolating someone yes. who's ill. So issues on isolation. So if someone is sick, remove him from the evacuation center so that they will not contaminate yes. the other kids. Yes. I saw a recent one. Some of the LGUs now have this. Uh, foldable type divisions. Mm -hmm. You've seen that? Yeah. They say it isolates a family uh -huh. so that the spread of respiratory illness mm -hmm. also is controlled. Yeah. Are, are you for that type of uh, evacuation center? It's a good option, but... Uh, but they said it's not... The ventilation the is ventilation, poor. The ventilation, yeah. It's poor, so the air is stagnant yes. in those cubicles, yes. which are usually filled up by yes. six to eight people because yes. our family levels are not the same as Japan. Yeah. In Japan, it's one or two people in the family in, uh, in the Philippines is six to eight. Yeah. So they, you put them in a three square yeah. meters of space and they're about six to eight yeah. people. So Sure, they may, families may have privacy, but we have to look into, of course, distancing uh, and then uh, oh no, looking at the engineering uh, aspect of that to make sure, yeah, like uh, for isolation, uh, distance is important. Uh, and that's what I've seen. Uh, we use school buildings mm. of elementary of the Department of Education and they fill one classroom with so many families mm -hmm. and it's really it's really like to me a culture medium for bacteria to yes, go from one yes, person to another yes. they need to decongest this yes, somehow yes. and build actual evacuation centers with more yes. space i think some lgus are beginning to yeah. do that are there any other measures to prevent spread of measles spread of uh, rubella or other preventable yeah. diseases of course a key there is uh, education Mm -hmm. So educating people about the, the health hazards of different uh, disasters, especially those occurring in the evacuation center, is important. So communicating risk is an important uh, uh, yeah, strategy that, that we need to do. So, so risk communication. Yeah, yeah. But, but we also have a preventive measures. When, uh, when we had Typhoon Haiyan, we vaccinated everybody who was six years old and below uh -huh. against measles. Yeah. Can you talk, tell me about... Uh, the role of vaccination or immunization yeah. during disasters. Okay, so vaccine-preventable diseases are also equally common after, in the aftermath of disasters. So the only thing that we can have to counter that is a very good coverage for the immunization. So during peacetime, we must ensure that the coverage rates are high okay, enough to, to prevent them. So measles is, is, is very common, and uh, there are other diseases that we, use, we really can prevent if the vaccination coverage is, is good. So if, the, if you're, like for example, when we had Typhoon Yolanda, the people are actually, the, the cost, the, the immunization rates in those regions were low. So we, we did mass vaccination. Yes. So Ron, what are the actions of the Department of Health or HEMBI to prevent uh, contagious communicable diseases like measles and other uh, preventable 
uh, communicable diseases. Okay. First, during peacetime, even before disasters happen, we need to make sure uh, vaccine-preventable diseases is a concern, especially measles. So Our we expanded need, program of yes. immunization has to be well done. Yes. So we have to make sure that uh, the vaccine coverage, immunization coverages are so high. So that is the main uh, if way. If it was like Yolanda, where in the uh, FIC, fully mm -hmm. immunized child, was low, yeah. that means the immunization program wasn't implemented well. What do you recommend for that uh, affected community? Okay. So... As part of the response, we, we often do what we call outbreak response immunization. Outbreak response immunization. immunization yeah. So what's outbreak response immunization? Uh, it's a way to, to, of course, to supplement the efforts to increase the vaccination and to, to, to help uh, sustain that herd immunity, which is important to maintain so that any outbreak of uh, vaccine-preventable disease can be can be prevented, which is so very you did true this, for right? You did yes. this during uh, Typhoon Haiyan. Yes. But we had a measles outbreak in Manila. Uh -huh. because, and then we found the source in Tondo mm -hmm. to be relatives of people who came from Tacloban, yes. who moved to their relatives. Yes. And the outbreak was in Metro Manila, but mm -hmm. we had no measles outbreak in the Tacloban yes. area yes. and the Visayas area. Mm -hmm. So this is one important aspect of prevention of uh, outbreaks and epidemics during times of disasters. Yes, because yes. measles is like a RO, the rate of uh, progression is like 16, yeah, right? Yeah, it's very contagious. So one person can, can infect Correct. 16 people. Yeah. So immunization is the key yeah. to stop that. And the, That's and, just one. Uh -huh. uh, on top of that, of course, uh, the treason is important. And then uh, apart from that, of course, uh, it's all about strengthening the immunity. So usually... Uh, children and immunocompromised people usually would uh, contract or get the, the measles. So we have to make sure uh, those things are also being uh, addressed. addressed. Yeah. And there are other uh, at-risk groups aside from the children. Women. Yeah. Women can be pregnant or can have reproductive health issues. What are the programs during disasters okay. for so this uh, we sector? We have what we call a minimum initial service package for sexual reproductive health. So maternal mortality is something uh, important to look into. And so when you say maternal mortality, it's about a pregnant mother yes. who evacuated to the center and then suddenly goes yeah. into labor, yeah. right? So what services do they okay. need? They need to be delivered well, yeah. right? So if they're not delivered well, they can die from yes. childbirth. Correct? Yes, so we have to ensure a safe pregnancy uh, can happen. Mm -hmm. So ensuring that there's no infection. So Correct. we have to make sure we uh, provide clean delivery kits. We mm -hmm. have to make sure uh, people are people who are trained are, are doing it and complicated ones are being sent to hospitals Referred. for, for ref referrals, especially those with uh, pregnancy complications. So identifying the women with high risk, making sure their nutrition yes. is continuous. Maybe making sure they get a tetanus shot as well yes, yes. as part of their prenatal. Yes. So the, all the public health issues for women are continued. Yes. And you need to bring them to evacuation centers. Yes. Correct. So let's go to the next one. Uh, emergency and essential care. Part of what people look for is injuries. You know, they, mm -hmm. they get, got injured because yeah. of the disaster. They have a fracture. They have a wound that's infected yeah, yeah. already. So how is this addressed by the okay. OH? So aside from communicable diseases, uh, trauma is an important group uh, that, we, that we should focus on. So uh, trauma... What is trauma? Trauma is okay. yeah, injury, right? Okay. Wound. So injury, injury. injury. Yeah. So uh, it depends on the hazard, but uh, during, uh, after common natural disasters, injuries are also very uh, common. So we have to make sure these things are addressed properly following uh, basic life support, should be there. First aid is... So uh, first aid, emergency care, yeah. some kind of uh, intervention. Intervention. Uh, stop the bleed, yeah. you know, stop, stop the bleeding, uh, immobilize the fracture, uh, cover and yeah. clean uh, dirty wounds, yeah. and then be able to bring them to a surgical center yes, for yes. repair or treatment and everything. Otherwise, they get neglected, right? Yes. And yes. if they get neglected, they can develop into complications. Infections, complications. So we go to the probably the last part, which is really the psychosocial aspect of disasters. Uh, it creates a lot of trauma to all the victims. of the, They become homeless. Mm -hmm. Some of their relatives die. Mm -hmm. uh, how is this addressed by the Department of Health? Uh, of course, uh, we acknowledge that it's an important aspect to look into. And sometimes uh, 
the effect is not clearly seen. Correct. So uh, we, we follow different phases. So first, uh, we have what we call psychological first, first aid. aid. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, we do this to, uh, to manage the immediate acute the immediate reactions of people, so especially those who have uh, lost their loved ones, who have their houses destroyed. So it's an immediate way of... Uh, so you need training to be able to identify the person and provide some sort of psychosocial support? Yes, correct? yes. So who do you train? The doctors, the nurses, the uh, providers, the health okay. so personnel? We train a wide range of uh, service providers. And uh, the Department of Health is also in coordination with other agencies. So sometimes we, we need to tap social workers. Okay. And then of the day, it's all about some social needs being met. So most of the... So making sure uh, anxiety, mm -hmm. depression, and all these psychological uh, issues happen and prevent, prevent them from getting into clear mental yes, illness. Yes. So this is what the psychological first aid does. Yes. Do you provide psychological first aid to the rescue people, to the yeah. responders? Yes. Yeah. Rescuers are what we call invisible victims. So, yeah, they need to, to receive some form of psychological first aid. Yeah, we've seen that well. with our young nurses and doctors yeah. that we send to the front lines. They come back affected yes. by what they see. So, yes. they need to be processed yes. as well. Yes. So, th do you have a process wherein you, your team can identify yes. uh, the person that needs to uh, rest or needs to be processed? Yeah. So we have uh, we use some tools, and then of course we do some activities that are especially if uh, when we deploy people. So we have to make sure that the team leader knows how to assess, yeah. and everyone should should Report. make their. And then there's self care. Everybody should self care because yeah. sometimes uh, you cry or because you see someone really affected or suffering. It also affects you as yeah. a doctor or as yeah. a nurse, correct? Sure. So psychosocial really is a very important part of disaster it's very important uh, in terms of disease surveillance the department of health produced something that was very interesting it's called speed mm -hmm. can you tell our people what speed is okay speed is an early warning and alert system so outbreaks of diseases should be prevented so speed is uh, innovative in terms of it using it uses SMS, mm -hmm. so it... Uh, this is the phone, the simple the phone. hand phone. Yeah. yeah, so we're the SMX, SMS capital. So uh, uh, with the help of health workers, they are able to report some of these uh, by, by way of symptoms. So it's called syndromic. So with those symptoms, we're able to... It's called act. syndromic surveillance. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, so health workers in different evacuation centers would report to yes. SMS, right? Yes. And the DOH central office, you in the central office, will see these reports. And then you see, oops, there is a very high incidence of uh, measles. Yes. So maybe we should bring vaccines there. Yes. There is a high incidence of diarrhea. Then you start to bring uh, potable water yes. or water yes. filtration yes. units or, or whatever diseases they report, you are able to manage. So that's really the logistic side mm -hmm. of disaster preparedness, yeah. right? Yeah. Being able to bring resources to the people that need them most. Uh, we have currently a, uh, a volcano that erupted, Taal Volcano. Can you tell me some of the health issues that happens during a volcanic eruption? Okay. So again, it, it depends on the hazard. But from our experience, the volcanic eruption was, uh, it was not explosive. So yes. it was uh, uh, a lot of, phreatic, a lot of, a lot of ash, a lot of ash. Steam ash. Steam so ash. Uh, the main uh, health issue there is respiratory. Correct. So uh, people run the risk of inhaling that ash particle and uh, it can affect their respiratory function, their breathing. So, so those people with uh, respiratory lung illness. problems would have a hard time. So yeah, we need to also protect uh, uh, kids from, from inhaling those dust particles. There was a shortage of uh, N95, N95 masks mask. in Metro Manila and mm -hmm. then the DOH announced, no, you don't need to wear N95 in Metro Manila. Yeah, yeah. So, it's very important that the correct information is also passed on because mm -hmm. say the first message was wear N95, which is correct for the affected yes, area. Yes. But then everybody in Metro Manila started to buy yeah. N95. So the people that were yeah. affected uh, now don't have N95, yeah. whereas the ones there, they need, they need that there. Yeah. The responders, yeah. the volunteers, the workers, correct. So this is very important. Now we're having an outbreak. It's called... Uh, 
and coronavirus acute respiratory disease. What, what happens during outbreaks and epidemics? How does HEMBI uh, play in terms of a role? Because it's a different type yeah, of disaster. Yeah. It's not like a volcano erupting or a typhoon coming mm -hmm. or an earthquake happening. Mm -hmm. But it's still a disaster, yeah, right? Yeah. So can you explain what happens in an outbreak or an okay. epidemic? Okay, and then in relation to our role in HEMBI. Yes. So uh, an outbreak or epidemic, it's usually addressed by many offices in the Department of Health. So one aspect is uh, surveillance, of course, detection and control. So we need to test uh, the, 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 detection and the, control. the specimen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one, one is preparedness and response. So HEMBI plays a role in terms of emergency preparedness and response by helping out in the mobilization of uh, resources. Resources. So you have the quarantine, the Bureau of Quarantine, Bureau of quarantine. which is in charge of blocking any disease yeah. from outside the country to enter the, the country. You have the uh, epidemiology National Epidemiology Bureau. Center, National yeah. Epidemiology yeah. Bureau, which makes sure that they monitor certain diseases, mm -hmm. that if they, there is an outbreak, what is an outbreak? Okay. An outbreak is an uh, excess number of cases over a period of time. So that's just to laymanize it a little to bit. Laymanize. So we have common dengue, and then the DOH declared a dengue outbreak. That mm -hmm. means the number of cases of dengue was higher than last yes. year in that same month Correct. and period. Correct. And what is an epidemic? Okay. An epidemic is uh, almost synonymous with an outbreak, but what we must distinguish it from is a pandemic. Correct. Oh. So uh, our uh, so outbreak is the start of an epidemic, right? So the epidemic is a full blown mm -hmm. many cases. Yeah. So they declared first they declared an outbreak, then the secretary of health declared a dengue epidemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how what is a pandemic? Okay, pandemic is uh, but we have to refer to the latest term being used by the WHO. Mm -hmm. uh, it's public health emergency of international, international concern. concern. This is for yeah. influenza, avian flu, yeah. uh, Zika. Ebola, yeah. uh, and now the yeah. end coronavirus. Interesting. Yeah. So, Ron, are there any things you'd like to say about what HEMBI does and uh, provide confidence to our Filipino people that the Department of Health is indeed ready, prepared, and follows the mandates of the Republic Act 10121 that I described earlier? And uh, give your message to the viewers. Okay. So, the Department of Health... Uh, along with other bureaus, and especially our uh, bureau, is doing its best to manage all the effects of these uh, emergencies and disasters, including the end coronavirus ARD. So we, we are creating systems to allow us to, you know, prevent these things from negative consequences. So we, uh, we call on everyone to, uh, to, to, to make sure the accurate information, the right information is being propagated. And that is only by way of following, uh, observing what the authorities are, are saying. Of course, the DOH always uh, would observe or follow the recommendations of the World Correct. Health Organization. Correct. So with that, Ron, I'll have a fist pump because we are not allowed to do handshakes because <laughs> of the current outbreak. Ladies and gentlemen, disasters, are common. The Philippines is a disaster-prone country. We have listened to Dr. Ron Law of the Health Emergency Management Bureau discussing the disaster risk reduction and management issues related to health. I hope we have educated you and informed you of what the government does in times of disaster. With that, thank you very much and see you in the next episode of Health Issues. <laughs>